Hey guys, Rick and Duke. Welcome to another episode of Warhog Words of Wisdom, raw and unedited. So here you go, guys. You get, if you're new to the show, you're probably asking, who's Duke? So Duke was my retired work dog. Uh, he started this thing. He ended it, but I won't say he ended He, you know, he will continue with it, but just wanted to uh, keep his memory alive. So if you want to know more about Duco, warhog.com. Uh, forward slash about slash in honor of Duco. We've got a whole layout on there on him. So um, just want to add him or keep him in there. Uh, don't forget, guys, uh, whatever platform you're listening on, please do me a favor because your most precious commodity is your time. And thank you for tuning in. But just help me out by hitting that uh, like, subscribe, leave us a rating, comment. I don't care if it's a thumbs up emoji, just something. And then, oh, by the way, if you want to have early access to the show, um, whether it's Warhog Words of Wisdom, On the Range podcast, Vantage Point, the vlog, you know, go to patreon.com forward slash On the Range podcast, and that'll have all your access there. So just to clarify, uh, On the Range podcast is our overall arching um, umbrella, if you want to say, platform. And then obviously Warhog Words of Wisdom is just a splinter off of that, just something me and Duke started a while back, just to talk about the whole osteosarcoma and that whole process. So one to keep that going. So what I want to cover in this episode of Warhog Words of Wisdom is just preparedness. And when I'm talking about preparedness, you know, numerous different things you can look at, right? So um, biggest thing is let's just look at whether you want to say this whole China virus thing rolling in, people were unprepared. Uh, we've got weather that rolls in depending where you live at in the country and people are unprepared so how do you get a better idea of what preparedness all looks like you know here's the deal at the end of the day guys uh i ended up doing a whole um you know abr academy with 511 on just kind of weather preparedness so the thing is you've got to look at your situation what you're doing and what is being prepared or preparedness to you so um, one of my earlier words of wisdom, you know, we talked about the home gym and I talked about how that was established prior to this whole China virus thing hitting. Was I preparing? Eh, yes and no. I was trying to be more efficient with my time, but the point being was I had my gym already in place so that now when things started shutting down, you know, there wasn't a big drama with that. So, um, could somebody say that was preparedness? Man, my fitness, you know, preparing that, want to make sure that's straight. Uh, when the whole pandemic china virus to all hit you know here's people out trying to run and get lysol wipes and hand sanitizer and you know paper towels and toilet paper oh my god it's like why wouldn't you have that stuff kind of on stock at least i do so again just trying to plant seeds um here's the thing man if you got caught with your pants down during that whole thing not a big deal barring you've learned from it so you know if you sit there and go do you got Toilet paper already at the house. Are you sitting there on your last roll and need to buy another one? Eh, you know, might want to have some of that stuff stocked. You know, same thing with your cleaning supplies and all this other stuff that we saw a spike again just during this uncertain time. Um, do you have, you know, food, water accessible that doesn't need, you know, look, food doesn't need power to be heated or cooked or prepared? Um, again, looking at the whole weather thing. So let's take, for example, North Carolina, man, we're we're susceptible to hurricane season, which, oh, by the way, it's coming up. Um, if you guys are on the East Coast, you know, are you prepared for, and I think we've seen as long as seven, 10 days, no power. Can you sustain yourself without leaving your house? Do you have uh, food and water there, you know, that's accessible? And I got it. You're going to say, what, well, Rick, you can just turn the faucet on and get water whenever you want. Eh, true to an extent. But there's been water mains that have broken. There's been water that's been contaminated. So to me, I don't always want to rely on uh, the man per se to go, hey, give me my water. And again, I'm not this big, um, quote unquote, prepper dude. I don't have years of supplies, you know, for the zombie apocalypse or anything like that. Nope. I'm just a guy that's got, uh, you know, enough things so that, hey, if something does happen, we're not sitting there falling into that hole um riot type mentality because i don't have uh those items available you know i, I gotta throw this one out there because i'd be a miss not quite sure what's up with the whole bread and milk but uh yeah they get word that hurricane's rolling in and bread and milk's gone man 
So I'm just thinking going, that's cool. Yeah, bread will probably hang out for a bit, but man, if you lose the power, I'm not sure how long your uh, fridge will stay cold for, or how long that milk's for. So you better chug that thing down, I guess. But uh, digress a little bit, but just got to always get a chuckle out of that. You know, preparedness, you can look at, man, there's so many, so many things that I think have caught people off guard, right? So Colonial Pipeline, you know, that whole ransomware deal, uh, East Coast, man, hit hard. So how many guys are running around with just fumes in their tank or don't even have a couple extra gallons of gas sitting around? And, and I get it. I'm not going to be a hypocrite and say, oh, you got to have all this stuff because I got it. If you're living in an apartment, you know, we kind of talked about the the apartment people. And again, I'm not putting them down. I still think you guys can be prepared, but you're probably not stowing, you know, fuel inside your apartment. I, I get it, man. Makes sense. Um, but you've got to look at things to, to sit your lifestyle. You know, what's that point that you're going to sit there and go, hey, I'm filling my vehicle up. You know, what's your rule of thumb of how much fuel is it going to be sitting in there when it's just sitting in the driveway? You know, I, I don't have these answers. Um, but I would say this, you know, kind of normal day to day, I wouldn't let that thing get, you know, three quarters of good, a good margin to sit in there is a little more work to fill it up and keep it topped off all the time. Yeah. I mean, obviously am I doing that when I'm on a road trip? No. I mean, I'm going to kind of run, um, a little further cause I'm just trying to make, make my road trip as efficient as possible, but you've got to think, um, kind of normal day to day. So prime example, you know, looking at the whole fuel thing um and the colonial pipeline you know when that all kicked off i was actually running the class um we didn't stop the class we didn't negate the class it's just okay cool i was already at you know um already sitting at that three quarter ish point on my vehicle so as right as it hit you know as i was getting out there close to the range hey man topped it off so i kind of knew hey man i could cover my three days of travel that i had going back and forth um to get out there if I couldn't get a resupply. So it's just doing prep things in that nature. Um, if you guys haven't seen, you know, I talked about the canine travel bag. We've got our four legged buddies, man. You know, Duke, I won't say his go bag per se, but I did have his bag that was packed that had all the stuff in there. So, hey man, we did have to sit there and go, hey, we've got to pick up and go. I'm not sitting there guessing, hey, do I have this or have that, you know? Um, had a couple of days of food because that's what I was used to traveling with him anyway. Um, you know, obviously, if you get your bigger food reserve, sure. If you're going to sit there and pick up and move, slap that stuff in there. And for us, it was just in a big uh, plastic drum. So, I mean, if we had to do that, it'd be easy. But in his travel bag, for lack of better terms, you know, I talked about got his water bowls um, or water food bowl, um, you know, all the things that I needed for him to sustain. So I would just say when you're looking at your overall preparedness, what are you doing for your pets as well? So think about it. Do you have a spare bag of dog food kind of in reserve? Or are you just running, hey, let me hit the bottom of the bucket and then hit that Amazon button and hope it shows up. Well, what if it doesn't? So again, it's just, it's a little bit different mindset or thinking that how can you be prepared? And then, oh, by the way, it's just not all about me. Um, you know, does the wife have her stuff? Do the kids have their stuff? You know, does the dog have their stuff? So it's it's just getting this mental mindset of, you know, kind of preparedness. Um, you know, think about your vehicle. You know, how, where's your vehicle sitting at uh, maintenance-wise? You know, is it needing that set of tires well, i'll do it next month and, and i get it man you know sometimes financial burden stuff like that but just try to keep on top of that stuff so that if for example you did have to go somewhere you're not sitting there worried about it and you're gonna sit there and go why would you leave trust me i've launched my family out of north carolina plenty of times uh again going off a prediction saying hey man we've got a storm rolling in um uh, unfortunately for me i had a stay just because of work but you know this day and age could we sit there and pack everything up and roll 100 we could so I would just say those are things that, you know, you kind of need to think about. Um, you know, we talked about earlier, hey, we're end up losing power. Okay. Well, if you got a propane type uh, grill or something, could you not, you know, use your grill to prep your food if you had to? I mean, there's, there's so many things, you know, it's like, what's the magic number of what you have? And, and again, for me, you know, it's that seven to 10 day mark that I want to have. Why? Because that's what we have seen happen here. Um, if you live, you know, out west, up in the northeast, uh, when your blizzards roll in, 
how long has your infrastructure been kind of shut down? I think these are the things that you guys got to look at is what happens around your area and could you sustain? Um, so it's, it's all just looking at how are we getting stuff straight? And oh, by the way, you know, the, one of our prior episodes, you know, the whole home gym thing, are you getting, are you keeping your fitness regimen up so that, you know, if something were to happen, you can, you know, deal with it accordingly. So here's a prime example here, right? North Carolina, hurricanes come in, high winds. Um, you got that chainsaw to cut that tree that came down. Well, cool. You might have the tool, but you can't even lift up the logs to move them out the way or stuff like that. So it's just looking at, at that whole portion of the preparedness is yes, having those items. To me, the preparedness is uh, the mental mindset, the physical attributes. Hey, you know, are you actually um, looking at or researching or doing your business well to go, where are we sitting at? And if something were to happen, how prepared are we? So I would just say, guys, you know, just kind of in, in recap, you've got to, number one, look at where you're at. You got to look at kind of what are you doing? Because obviously somebody that lives in the city, uh, you've got to probably do things a little different than somebody that lives, um, if you want to say in a more rural type setting. Um, apartment people are probably going to live or have prep things a little different than uh, home people. But at the end of the day, it's a total package deal. Um, have enough of those things, items, food sources, water, cleaning, whatever that will sustain you for what you've typically seen. Um, but then again, we saw kind of with the whole China virus deal that, man, I don't really remember. Remember toilet paper being this hot ticket item. Not sure um, how this virus was supposed to attack our gut and have everyone sitting on a toilet for days on end. But toilet paper for that thing was the uh, the hot ticket item, and it was kind of comical, man. I don't want to say it was comical. I guess kind of bad choice of words, but man, you saw people almost in a panic. Um, why would you just have some of that, you know, stuff already preset on hand? So just that's the biggest thing I'm trying to drive for is getting you guys to kind of think. Um, you know, and then kind of one last part is, you know, you got to think about, all right, cool. Uh, let's say I lose power for 10 days. What am I doing? Probably can't get on that magic phone and rot your brain doing whatever. Um, do you have board games? Do you got crossword puzzles, word searches? What are you doing? Granted, there might be some home repairs or tidiness that needs to happen along the way, but what are you doing just to, to burn that time? Uh, keep yourself entertained. So, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff to, to think about. You can kind of deep dive into this. But again, I just want to kind of hit the wave tops, give you guys just a little bit of food for thought, kind of get yourself uh, leaning towards that way, you know, is part of that. You know, we've seen um, people needing to use firearms to defend your property. Okay, cool. That goes into kind of your preparedness. Are you actually going out there training with it? And I get it, you know, the, the whole ammo shortage deal. Um, but again, you look at alternatives like Airsoft, you know, I can still train, not necessarily shooting my precious bullets, but I am still getting my training in. Dry fire doesn't cost you a dime, uh, just time. So all kinds of different things, um, you know, that can be done to get yourself prepped and just start with a simple basic list going, hey man, what do we need? Kind of what's been our foreseen past issues we've had and then just kind of check that stuff off and it doesn't have to be all at once man just a little bit of time get yourself straight and then just kind of go from there so um anyway guys that's kind of you know what we got just looking at the whole preparedness type deal so i would just uh tell you guys get that kind of look to incorporate that into your lifestyle um don't forget about the total encompassing family and uh, that way, you know, if you guys are ever in a pinch again or something comes up, it won't be a drama because you guys will be prepped. If you got bit, like I said before, with this whole thing, uh, figure out what your shortcomings were, plus those things up, and then it'll be good to go. So um, just get yourself prepared, get a good workout in, and um, don't forget, take the dog out, get him for a run, walk, do something. Anyway, guys, uh, appreciate you tuning in, appreciate your time. Don't forget, patreon.com. Uh, forward slash on the range podcast best way to support the show uh same thing tell your friends family what you guys are liking about it hit that uh, rating button subscribe button leave us a thumbs up emoji do something just to help us beat the whole algorithm 
Uh, I can't thank you enough, guys, for giving us your most precious commodity, your time. And yes, Warhawk Words of Wisdom is an umbrella broadcast underneath the On Range podcast system. You guys take care. Stay safe. Warhog out. Thank <laughs> you.